Hi there. I'm Roger Manus. Welcome to the Rome Floyd Chamber Small Business Spotlight, broadcasting from the Hardy Realty Studios. And we work in cooperation with the Rome News Tribune. And today, it's all Rome Floyd Chamber of Commerce. Uh, hi, Jeannie Krieger. Hi, Thomas Kislat. Hello. Hi, Roger. <laughs> How are y'all? Very well. We're, Doing very well. We are, we are broadcasting our podcast via Zoom so we can social distance. So you might notice a little bit different in the audio, but that's okay. That's where we're... That's how the world works these days. Jeannie and I were just talking about that before the show, how everybody's getting used to working from home. I don't know if people are more productive or less productive, but we're figuring it out. Um, uh, let's talk about chamber business. Jeannie, give me an update on ribbon tying and, and anything else sure. going on. Sure. So we've been encouraged to see you know new startups of retail, um, small business in our community, and we've had several um, – ribbon cuttings for that. We've also seen businesses open and back up after being um, shuttered for a, you know, a month or so. And so they're doing ribbon tyings, just um, communicating out the community that they're back in their offices and open for business. So, you know, we're hardened by what we're seeing. Um, we're also seeing a lot of job postings to our jobs page at RomeGA.com. And, there are some great opportunities out there. So, you know, through the work that Thomas and I and the rest of our staff do, we really want to um, make sure that um, folks know about the opportunities here in Roman Floyd County. You mentioned the startups. I'd like to follow up with you on that, the ribbon cuttings. A tough time to start up during a pandemic, but are, are you feel like are the startups behind last year's pace at this time or ahead of last year's pace? Uh I don't know. It feels a little bit for us like it's um, ahead. I don't have the exact numbers right. to for, at this point to um, bear that out. And it could be that, you know, just um, during the shelter in place, we didn't have those. So now we're seeing, you know, everybody ramp up at the same time. But, um, you know, from clothing stores to specialty boutiques to, um, you know, Pelican Snowballs in West Rome. We've seen a lot of businesses, you know, open their doors and, you know, do the ribbon cutting and they're doing very well. Yeah, it's um, and it was also good. The the job postings you mentioned, you know, we're slow seeing the unemployment rate tick back down. It's, of course, it's not where it was pre pandemic, not even close, but Fact of the matter is, folks are slowly but surely starting to get back to work, which is great news. Thomas, uh, fill me in from your perspective. Let's see. Let me get this. You're, this is a mouthful. You are the Director of Membership and Entrepreneurial Development, which sounds very impressive. Uh, and you've been on the show before. Just give me an update from your world there at the Chamber. Yeah. Uh, for, first, uh, I want to um, add on to your remark uh, at the beginning of the show that, you know, you were kind of like we're, we're joking we are, uh, in a, in a Zoom, Zoom meeting world now, so uh, we don't have, so we can physical distance. And um, we here at the chamber uh, more often, you know, um, Rome's becoming a, uh, a hot spot and moving into a hot spot. Um, so we have more folks coming in uh, from, 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 it, from Metro Atlanta. Because uh, people are realizing, hey, you know, what I'm doing here, I can do this from home most of the time. I don't have to uh, mess with traffic uh, on, on 285 um, on the connector down there, um, downtown, midtown. So um, that's what we've been hearing that, you know, more and more people looking for a place to live uh, here up, up here in Rome. And um we keep watching that uh, trend and, you know, that's uh, of course beneficial for, for our businesses here. So it's not just entrepreneurial development. It's, it's entrepreneurial adjustment. People are adjustment, adjusting. Which, which leads into the development. Cause you know, that's not of course uh, interesting for, for our in entrepreneurs to, to stay within the county lines, of course. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, we, we know it's a great place to live and do business and, and, um, the fact that you could probably now work for someplace farther away, but work from home, uh, that's something uh, certainly great to learn. Uh, it's, that's, that's, <laughs> that's making uh, lemonade out of lemons, as they say, or whatever the phrase is that I just screwed up. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jeannie, I know there were some other th things going on with the chamber business that you wanted to touch on and get out there, get publicized. Sure. We are planning right now for our um, business expo, and that will 
the scheduled date is November 5th at the forum. We are planning right now to do it in person, but we're also planning to do it virtually. Thomas will talk more about that in just a minute, about how we're going to do it both ways. But we feel like um, just November 5th, that's kind of the opening of the shopping season for the holiday season. And so we want to make sure that we're representing our small retail businesses, especially during that time, so they can show their goods and services, you know, um, either in person or virtually. And, you know, part of the, the benefit of this is it's just saving our members. There's no added cost for what we're doing virtually, and it's saving them um, money to set up online when, you know, we're, we're doing the work for them. So um, all of this is an effort to promote our Shop Room, Shop Floyd campaign because we know that this is how we keep these business, businesses running. Um, we literally, it helps um, all of these small businesses keep their employees. So it sustains job growth and adds to job growth in many cases. So we're excited about, you know, what's um, what we're looking at for November 5th. And also um, we're going to kick off our leadership programs this year. We do leadership run for adults and we do high school leadership run. So um, we're ushering out a class of each and we're bringing forth um, new um, folks from the community and from the high school students to participate in both of those programs. And we're very excited about that. A lot going on, not to mention the ribbon tyings and ribbon cuttings. So, Thomas, what 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 challenge does it does it give you having to work on an event in two ways? Uh, preparing, you know, we're all uh, preparing for the worst, but hoping for the best. So, with the expo, you want to do it face to face. Uh, you want to have people there in attendance and be able to walk around and engage face to face. But you're preparing virtually. Is it is it double the work? <laughs> Um, no, not really. I mean, we, we have great support um, uh, through our um, uh, Rome Digital is, is doing our virtual world. So uh, we feel pretty confident uh, to get help from them. And it's actually really exciting to uh, to do a two pronged uh, strategy here. Um, so because um, that, that's going to be the future. And, you know, uh, experts predicted this uh, years ago that this will shift at one point. You know, sooner or later, you know, the pandemic sped up this this process a little bit. So um, I'm really excited to actually be a part of this. However, you know, uh, also, you know, I'm looking forward to to actually plan the live event because you know, it's, you you want to see people, and it's it's still a little different. Um, and we don't want to cancel uh, an event like this. The 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 Chamber Expo, the Business Expo, is a flagship event in the fall for our area. Um, we are targeting um, up to you know a quarter of a million people live between Cartersville, Tri and Center and um, and um, Woodstock. So um, we want to we want to capture that audience uh, live in person, of course. You know, and we want to follow all the um, Georgia safety uh, precautions and measurements. Uh, but we also know uh, right now we, we got to, you know, expect the unexpected. So um, we, we have to plan both ways. Really exciting. And um, the virtual um, option, of course, opens doors to, to a whole new um, audience. You know, we, 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 we can speak now to, you know, people in Tennessee, people in Kentucky, people in California. Um, and that's, uh, of course, really exciting for our exhibitors and uh, retailers um, to, um, you know, why not uh, get a little piece uh, of the pie from, from those markets over there? So uh, really exciting times. Uh, workload, I don't have anything to compare this with. It's my first expo to plan on this side, so um, I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. uh, Jeannie, uh, what's the history of the expo? Um, when did you guys start that, and how long has it been going on? And uh, t- Just give me Expo 101. Sure. So it's gone on for over 20 years and it's um, at the forum and we typically have um, over a a hundred exhibitors and almost a thousand people attend is how it's been in the past. We have sponsors um, for the event and we're very appreciative there. And so um, like Thomas said, it has been one of our flagship events, you know, because this is how we um, raise money for our uh, shop run shop fluid campaign which is so important to us that we continue 
you know, underscoring the message of, you know, shop with our local businesses and um, is, is just more important now than ever. And so, um, you know, it's got a great history. There's a lot of volunteers involved with it and we appreciate all the great work they do. And I, I think that, you know, the timing has always been great because it has been at the start of, you know, the holiday season. So um, we're, we're excited about it. And like Thomas said, this is a way for us to, um, you know, not only it is a plan B, but in a way it's also just adding so much value to an already great event. And, and we want to respect whatever people's comfort level is. You know, some people may not be comfortable in attending, but want to definitely be online to see, you know, those goods and services and, you know, their friends. So we we're excited about being able to offer this. When do you think you'll have to make a decision? I think probably the 1st of October to mid-October, somewhere right in there. We're following the numbers closely. We we adhere to the governor's executive orders. Um, there is some guidelines that we'll have to go by um, for uh, trade shows that the governor's office has put in place. And, of course, we will do those. And it, it's, it's very um, what you would expect with wearing masks and we'll – We'll take it even a step further and probably do some temperature checks upon entry, um, having one-way aisles, um, you know, just the social distancing. But there's a way to do that at the forum. There's a lot of space there, so it's it's a good venue um, when we have this challenge in front of us. And one, so she would go to the expo like you walk through Publix, one-way aisles. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> people, That's exactly right. people are yeah. used to it. So Thomas is the... I know you mentioned this was the first one you're working on, obviously, in your new position there at the chamber. But um, are the are the businesses, is the participation rate the the same as last year, better, worse because of the pandemic? Uh, people jumping on board again? Uh, people jumping on board. People are asking um, right now. We, are, we just um, announced the date last week. So and um, we always give um, the exhibitors from the year prior first pick so right now they have a two-week window it's uh, we had about um 100 uh, exhibitors uh, last year so um they just received the letter the email um and um telling them about the expo so um we already got great feedbacks we already have signups uh for vir- virtual and uh in person uh so we're looking forward to that and then of course um over the next few weeks, um, after school is starting back, everybody is in a different uh, mode of thinking anyway. Um, we'll expect the numbers to go up. And I'm really looking forward to um, going back to the connectivity and in-person and, and virtual. I'm really looking forward, along with the team here at the Chamber, to um, connect the dots, the virtual dots to the uh, in-person dots. And, you know, there are some businesses, they have not changed their business models for the ca- decades, and um, we, we want to take them by the hand and uh, take that intimidation factor of uh, global internet, uh, virtual, uh, away from them and, and, and guide them into that new uh, stream of opportunities that uh, the virtual online world uh, will open up for them. That's certainly intriguing. It's a changing world, Jeannie. Uh, I guess I guess we've all got to figure it out, don't we? That's exactly right. Absolutely. The the nice thing is Thomas and I were in a meeting earlier this morning, you know, with some of our young professionals who are entrepreneurs. And so we're seeing that in Rome and that, you know, we want to help uh, promote them and what they're doing. But like we, you know, want to promote you and what you're doing. That's what the chamber does. But it is heartening to see more young uh, entrepreneurs locating here and being successful in what they do. And so speaking back to, it really doesn't matter so much where you live. And so when you can get the quality of life that we have here in Rome and Floyd County, that's tremendous for, you know, folks who have a kind of a global market, but, you know, want to be near trails and um, want to have, not have to battle traffic and, you know, want to maybe, um, live where they the city has walkability but also there's a lot of land space and there's rivers and you know all that Roman Floyd County offers so you know that's part of our broader um, strategy of attracting young people to not only visit here but to live here and work here 
Yeah, uh, it all works together. Uh, business connectivity, virtually or face to face, it's uh, and the expo may be a, a chance to connect the dots, as, as Thomas says. Hopefully, there'll be a little bit of both. Thomas, if are you the point on this? If a small business is interested, and this is through the podcast here, this is the first they're hearing of it. How can they reach out to you uh, to participate or learn more about it? Email or website or. Yeah, email uh, by phone, of course. Uh, my phone number is 706-291-7663. They can reach out all the time. You know, the easiest way also is, you know, open up Google, open uh, Rome Chamber, um, dial the number, ask for Thomas. My email uh, for the folks out there, I have something to write there. It's T Kislat, T K I S L A T, at RomeGeorgia.com. So it's the easiest way to get in touch with me. Uh, leave your phone number, leave a message, and I get. Back, I promise you, I get back to you. And for those of you listening that have never met Thomas, Thomas, as we say down south, you ain't from around here, are you? I can tell by your accent. That's correct. I grew up in Cartersville. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did not. <laughs> uh, that's that European humor right there. I, I recognize right, right. Born and raised in Germany. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, okay. Thank you, Thomas. Any final thoughts, Jeannie? No, just please check out our website. Check out that jobs page, RomeGA.com, and give us a call. We're here to serve. So. We um, look forward to talking to folks. And you guys have been doing a great job through this whole thing with helping businesses connect with, you know, government funding and, you know, Shop Rome, Shop Floyd and ribbon tyings and ribbon cuttings and your triage page. You guys have been all over it. So uh, oh, be sure to check out the website if you need some assistance, but specifically um, to learn more about the expo moving forward. And we'll wait for you guys to make a final decision here in the next few weeks, uh, October-ish, um, about whether you're on site or virtual. Um, so anyway, thanks for joining us. This has been the Rome Floyd Chamber Small Business Spotlight. I'm Roger Manus with Rome Business Radio. For Jeannie Krieger and Thomas Kislat, thanks for listening. <laughs>